Shema was only six when she lost her leg, injured in the early years of a war that's been fought for most of her young life. I was playing with a boy and while we were walking, the shell hit us. I didn't feel anything until the next day when I found myself in the hospital. I tried to reach for my leg and I asked my father, where is my leg? He told me that I'd been injured. So I asked him, so from today onwards, I will live without a leg. But Shema was lucky. The child next door she had been playing with was killed. Her father encouraged her to focus on what remained, not what was lost. Ali Ahmad complains that aid groups often overlook parts of Yemen. Some organizations do not include this area in their aid handouts at all. The residential part of the city is in the line of fire, and no aid has entered for a while. If the Prophet ﷺ was alive and the Prophet ﷺ saw the image of that young Yemeni child whose bones, whose rib cages were so pronounced and then dying because they don't have proper food and drink, what do you think the Prophet ﷺ would do? When you're dealing with a humanitarian disaster with over 20 million people in need of aid, over 8 million of whom don't have proper access to food, you put yourself in a world alone with them. So I want you to actually tune out everybody else that's involved, all the political factors involved. And I want it to just be you, the people of Yemen right now, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about Allah confronting you with these images on the Day of Judgment and asking you, did you not see what was happening to these beloved servants of mine? Did you not see what was happening to these children that were so beloved to the Prophet sallallahu Combating hunger is a fundamental pillar of our faith tradition. Of the earliest revelations, brothers and sisters, even before Allah legislated prayer five times a day, even before Allah legislated Psalm of Ramadan, even before Allah legislated the zakat. Imagine before you had to pray, there was one commandment to worship Allah and the second commandment that came down in the Quran. The second commandment was to feed the hungry. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَانًا وَلَا شُكُرًا and the believers are those who give of their own food, even though they need that food, but they give it to others and they give it to the faqir, to the miskeen, to the prisoner of war. And Allah says, when they give of their food, they say to the person, don't thank us, don't thank us. We are feeding you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you give to others, Allah will give back to you. It's very simple. When you give to others, Allah will give back to you. For how long will we give? For as long as we're happy to receive. Simple as that. For how long will we give? For as long as you want to get from Allah, you will continue to give and give and give and give. And on Judgment Day, as long as you continue to show your generosity with whatever you have, just give and give and give. And Allah will reward you in this world and of course in the world to come.